Hello my friends and let's go to Bakhmut. We have some sort of the update over there and Russia unfortunately got more territory and finally they were capable to cross the railroad in the city. It was a four day fight for the railway station. Firstly Russians captured it and Ukrainians were able to push them out from their positions and finally today Russians captured or recaptured the railway station. Now they have the control over the most part of the railroad in the central part of the Bahamut city. And nowadays not only Wagners are fighting in the Bahamut city, they send the airborne divisions directly to the city and also the special forces of the Russian Federation and today Ukraine managed to capture 40 Russian war prisoners. About the Wagner elite forces that got the military experience before in Syria and Africa, it's very hard to capture them alive. As for the Russian prisoners who serve in Wagner, it's much more easier. And there was the huge explosion reported in Bahmut. We have the video of it and you may check my Telegram channel in the video description just below where I can post all of the videos that I cannot upload on YouTube because of the platform policy. So I use it as my alternative resource if something goes wrong with my YouTube channel. So you may always find me on my Telegram. And my friends on Telegram helped me to find out the place. So this is the building with the blue roof and three identical buildings those are nine story buildings and also we have the city on the background so on the map you can see three identical buildings and the building with the blue roof so I guess it was filmed by the Russian side because we have their marks on the video and it's the mirror looking footage I guess it was filmed from this direction directly on this building with the blue roof why do I think like that because you have the city in the front and the only way how you can take it in the front is filming from this side on the north part so the explosion happened somewhere in this area probably this bridge was eliminated to cause Russian disruptions with supplies into the central part of the city but this area right now is under control by the Russian forces I can show you this area on the map so you can see it's three identical buildings and the building with blue roof is over here so this bridge I guess was just eliminated. In that case it was done by the Ukrainian forces because I don't see the reason for Russians to destroy their supply lines. And basically this group of the Russian forces are now being a little bit cut out from their supplies and now they have the obstacle here across the river and also they have the huge obstacle the railroad itself. Yes, they still can send light ammunition, bullets, but they cannot provide the group with the tanks. They need the engineering equipment to cross this river over here and we constantly backfire and destroy their position so they need time and efforts to build their bridges in this area. So for the few days I do not expect the movement of the Russian forces from this direction because of this bridge cut out. Obviously if it was the bridge, Russian media say that they destroyed the Ukrainian ammunition depot and Ukrainian sites say that they destroyed the ammunition depot of the Russian forces. But based on the satellite image and the actual video of explosion I think it was the bridge in this area. And the great thing for Ukrainian army is that we still keep Chromov under our control and to the very important intersection over here and over here. Yes, nowadays it's more difficult to provide supplies for the Bahmut city, but it's not impossible. And this is the tactical map of the military land resource. You can see it's a little bit different compared to the deep state. I trust deep state more because they base their map on the eyewitnesses and the people who are really on the front lines, civilians or military. So we know that Russia took this part, this bridge was probably destroyed and also they have took this part including the railway station over here. And they are very close to the military base territory which is actually the big park with some of the buildings and from that base they may go across the city with several vectors of their attacks. So it's very important not to let them into that military base but finally they will take control over it. As you can see there is the sign of the fighting very close to Kromova and Russia is still not able to penetrate the Ukrainian built defense lines. 
And Prigozhin, the leader of Wagner, gave quite a long interview about the perspectives of the Wagner group in the Bakhmut city. He says that finally they will manage to take the city. Well, probably they will be able to make this happen, but for what cost? He says that Ukraine continue to reinforce the brigades and battalions uh, which are fighting in the city with new weaponry, new soldiers, so it's not an easy walk for the Wagner forces. And remember the fight for Kherson, then Russia left the city and surrounding area in just one night. 20,000 soldiers in just few hours crossed the Dnieper River and blown up all of the bridges. Basically running away for their lives, here Ukraine resists very hard. Ukrainian army digged into the ground and for Russia it takes many months with the best their forces to gain some of the ground of the Bakhmut city. And yes, they're taking it, but in a way that soon we're gonna speak about the end of the Wagner forces. They were exhausted in Solidar and from what we can see, there will be not much left from the Wagner forces if they take the Bakhmut city. Even now, they cannot complete their tasks and ask for the help from the regular Russian elite forces and airborne divisions. And from, let's say, not confirmed resources, I got the information that Ukrainian army got the order to withdraw from the Bakhmut city because of the severe losses. And now we are doing it. But as I said to you, it will not happen as for Russia in Kherson. We're not gonna leave the Bakhmut city in a few hours no it will take many weeks for ukrainian forces to leave their city we are doing it much more controllable covering the flanks and avoiding the encirclement of the ukrainian army plus we are breaking the russian army in bakhmut and they cannot send their resources to other points of the front lines so here we have the russian regular army on the south as well and also in bakhmut Mostly, yes, the private Wagner army, but also accompanied with the Russian regular forces nowadays. I know it because today Ukrainian soldiers posted the video how they captured some of their Russian prisoners and they were from the regular Russian army, not Wagner's. So definitely Russia stack on the north, they stack on the south and the only place where they move more or less successfully is into the city itself in the general part of it and also they try to move to Kat Khromove and the only supply line that goes to the city but there is no success for their army. About Avdiivka, the same picture, so they stack over here, they stack in the south, and on the north there is no any attack vector. Before Wagner's were sent to reinforce the regular Russian army in Avdiivka with their elite forces, but now they were sent back with the reinforcements from the regular Russian army. I think that Russian military command is really in lack of competence because they have two of the major hotspots nowadays, Bakhmut and Avdiivka, and they cannot cancel concentrate in achieving the single task. They've split their forces and now stack in both of the directions. In Bahamut they are more successful, but not really too much. And let's go to Luhansk Oblast Bilohorivka that was taken by Ukrainian forces finally. And it is the update, don't be scared, Russia is not on a massive offensive over there, it's just the map update for a long time in this area, it was described by the deep state map. So again, Russians day by day were taking those fields under their control, but because there are not many civilians or Ukrainian forces were not posting the pictures, we were in lack of information of what exactly is happening in that particular area. Now we have the information, because some Someone posted something on the social media, maybe from this small village. And those were the only changes on the front lines, but unfortunately, according to some intelligence services, for example from Estonia, we got the information that Russia collects more people, more soldiers from their mandatory service, the young Russian men, and after mandatory service, they were proposed to join the contract Russian army, and there is no basically option for them to refuse, so they may say Send new soldiers to the front lines on the eastern part of Ukraine. Russia fired the rockets on Slavansk, targeting the civilian building. It's not really far away from the front lines, 
and it was reported that nine people lost their lives including kids so if someone asks me do i have the feelings for the russian soldiers who are suffering on the front lines who are being killed by ukrainians no no any feelings i just want those russians to get out from our land or found their peace in the ground and it seems that Prigozhin feels that Russia would have to withdraw their army and the Wagner soldiers from Ukrainian territory. In today's interview he said that it's better not to assault any longer and after his forces would capture Bakhmut, it's better to stop and defend the captured territories. He continued to say that Ukraine got around 200,000 soldiers fully ready for the full-scale counterattack. And if Ukraine would be successful with that, Russia may lose not just the part of the front lines, but it may lose all of the occupied territories, including Crimea, and that would lead to 1917 year or to the new Russian Revolution. And actually those guys are getting ready for that revolution. There are several clans and several armies inside the Russian Federation that will fight against each other in that case. And that scenario would be absolutely great for Ukraine. But unfortunately Ukraine has just one chance to break Russians in a very fast and strong counterattack taking back all of the territories. Do we have chances for it? I guess so, but it's better to obtain modern day equipment like airplanes. But Russia also struggles with their equipment. Here you can see the truck or military tractor with a cannon on the top. This cannon was mounted on the ship before but now mounted on the tractor and Russia has many of those. Yes, it has some sort of the off-road capability, but no any armor. This is the double barrel one with a 20mm caliber and could be effective against the drones or low-flying aircraft as helicopters. But in general there is no automatic aiming equipment, nothing, so you basically do it as in a Second World War. And as for the small drones, it's almost impossible to spot them in the sky with a human eye without any kind of the radars and not saying about firing and targeting the drone. So it's a very complicated task to do it from this thing. And according to the Atlantic Council resource, Russia started to cancel the parades in many of the Russian cities because they are in lack of the equipment and the vehicles they currently have would be just enough for the Moscow parade. Yes, Russia performs the Great Parades uh, every year on 9th of May. We have the information from the Associated Press that Ukraine haven't shared the ideas or plans for the future country tag, and it's good. United States haven't got any plans from the Ukrainian command and Ukrainian command decided not to share this information because they do afraid that this information might be leaked on the way to United States. And honestly, it is true, so the information was leaked, but not about the actual ideas or actual preparation by Ukrainian army. In those leaks, there was just the statistics of the weaponry that the United States sent to Ukraine, but I think it's the open information and the weaponry that allies uh, think that Ukraine might use for the future counterattack and mostly there are just some thoughts about the United States officials about the future Ukrainian counterattack. Some say that they got the doubts about the successful counterattack. Some say that it should be successful but in general there was no any kind of crucial information that leaked in the recent leaks. And about the penalty that this guy may potentially have, he might have around 10 years per every document he published in the social media and he published from 50 up to 100 documents. So that's around 500 up to 1000 years in prison. So this is the report from Estonia that Russia may reinforce its attacks on the eastern side of Ukraine, gaining more territory. But it is only possible if they have more soldiers in their army. And Putin signed up the recently approved document with electronic endorsements for the Russian man. And now for the Russian man, there is no way to hide from their military and they start to leave the their country with a new wave again. All the airports are overwhelmed, all of the roads are traffic jammed. 
but some of the countries, including the neighbors, are not very happy to accept those people. That is why many Russians fled to the South America or to the Southeast Asia. And Russians have already claimed that they are fighting against the Leopard tanks and were able to capture the one. So we observed the Leopard tank. So their sabotage unit captured a Leopard tank. Maybe Leopard 2, because probably we don't have the Leopard tanks, just Leopard 2. But it couldn't be brought to our rear, so they drowned it in a swamp. This is a fact. Leopards are here. I'm sure that they are not on the front lines, so Ukraine keeps them for the future counterattack. And this video I posted on my Telegram channel, so this is the bullet that hit the helmet. It didn't get into the helmet under the 90 degrees angle, otherwise it would have penetrated it, but under some sort of the angle it didn't make it into the hat. And this is the Kevlar helmet, I guess the United States standard. At least I think we got them from the United States of America. And our guy is really happy, it is his second birthday. The things as good helmets and good armor are very important for our soldiers and they do save lives. But Russia mostly uses uh, the old helmets from the Second World War. Sometimes they use those helmets that they were able to throw away from the Ukrainian army. It's interesting, but according to the leaked documents, the General Gerasimov with the Security Council Secretary Patrushev wanted to perform the coup in Russia. The documents were published by the Deutsche Welle and they are from the same set of the leaked documents. So Gerasimov and Patrushev wanted to sabotage the war on 5th of March 2023. Then Vladimir Putin was supposed to start a course of hemiotherapy. So we have the confirmation of the rumor that Putin is sick with cancer. But finally Gerasimov had changed his mind for the unknown reason. Well, it could be a truthful information, but no one knows for sure, as Ukrainian science says that the leaked document includes the false information as well as the trustworthy information. It seems like Turkey sends more armored vehicles to Ukraine, those are Autocar Cobra 2, and this train was spotted in Romania. I just hope that it is really for Ukraine. And finally, China said that they will not support Russia with their weaponry and they will control all the exports to avoid that happening. Well, that's the good news. My friends, now press the like to this video and if you want to support my job, there are some links available in the video description just below. And also you may support me on Patreon and on the sponsorship on this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and for your help. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.